Hey guys, so I was asked by a student to go over the using algebra to solve word problems. Uh, that was the lesson 2.9 that we did on Wednesday, I think. Um, so shout out to Maya, thanks for suggesting this. If any of you guys have any suggestions that you need help with or want me to make a video for, just let me know and I'll do my best to uh, make a video and give you guys a hand, something that you can go refer to or watch and make sure that you have a firm understanding of the concepts we're discussing. So using algebra to solve word problems. Now, let me make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. So there's three steps to using algebra to solve word problems. First, we need to declare our variables and we're going to use the let this equal x statements. So let x equal something. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to set up our equations to solve. And then finally, we're going to define our answer, which means what is that x equal? What is x equal? And what is our second or third number if we need to get those? All right, let's get to it. Finding two numbers. So the first type of problem we're going to cover today is finding two number. So this says the larger of two numbers is four more than the smaller number. If the sum of the numbers is 74, find the numbers. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to partition my paper into my three parts. So my first part, I'm going to declare the values. That's going to go down here. My second part is solving. It's going to go in the middle and defining the answer is going to go on that side. So that's why I partition my paper into three different parts because there's three different steps to this problem. So step one, we need to declare our variables. So let the larger of two numbers is, or I'm sorry, the larger of two numbers is four more than the smaller number. So that means that I know that I'm going to have two numbers because it literally tells me there that I'm going to have two numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let x, let x equal the smaller number. So let x equal the smaller number. So that's the first number. So the second number, it says two numbers. The larger of the two numbers is four more than the smaller number. So I know that four more is going to be x plus four. So I'm going to say let x plus four be the larger be the larger number. So now I have my two variables identified, my two numbers identified. The first number, which is the smaller one, is x, and the larger one is x plus four. So all I need to do now is I need to write this into an equation. Well, I need my two numbers, so my two numbers, first number is x, and my second number, so I need to add this, my second number is x plus 4. And that's going to equal, so the sum of the numbers is 74, so that's going to equal 74. So then I just do my balance like I normally do, and I need to first combine my like terms. So if I am combining my like terms, x plus x gives me a 2x. Then I bring down the rest of my equation, plus 4 equals 74. So then I need to basically just solve this equation. So I need to do the inverse operation to get rid of this 4. So the inverse of addition is subtraction, so these are now going to cross out. So then I subtract on this side too. So 74 minus 4 will give me 70. Then I bring everything down. 2x equals 70. So in order to get my uh, x all by itself, I need to now divide by 2. So I divide that side by 2 and this side by 2. This crosses out here. 70 divided by 2 is 35. So that means that x equals 35. So x equals 35. So our smaller number, so our smaller number over here is x. 
So we know that our smaller number is 35. To find our bigger number, all we need to do is we need to fill in for this variable over here. Fill that in. So that's going to be 35 plus 4 equals 35 plus 4 is going to be 39. So 35 plus 39 equals 74. Let's see if that's a true statement. So I've got 35 plus 39. That's 14. Okay, plus 4 is 74. So 35 plus 39 equals 74. So that is a true statement. So that means, excuse me, that means that x equals 35 and x plus 1, I'm sorry, x plus 4 equals 39. So that means that this is our smaller number. So that's our smaller number. And this is our larger number. So 35 smaller, 39 is larger. And if I were to enter this in, I would just put 35 comma 39. That's a sloppy one. Colt, no. 35 and 39, no sir. So, that's one problem handled. The next one done, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And that one says, the larger of two numbers is 6 less. The larger of two numbers is 6 less than twice the smaller number. So I need to identify what my problem is asking me. And then I need to come up with an equation and solve. Cole was chewing on a bone and it would have been so loud. So I partition my paper first, just like I did up top. So the larger of two numbers, so again, I'm going to have two numbers. So I'm going to say let x equal smaller number. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to write. I don't think we'll need all that room to solve our equation. So let x equal smaller number. And now I need to figure out what the larger number is. So 6 less than, so it says right here, 6 less than twice the smaller number. So 6 less than twice the smaller number is going to look something like this. So let 6 less than twice. So 2 twice is 2x, two, 2 times the smaller number, less than so 6 less than 2 times the smaller number is going to be my larger number. So that's going to be the larger. That's going to be my larger number. So now I just need to write an equation with what we've got here. So again, we're going to start with x because that's my smaller number. Plus, and then I'm just going to fill in with this equation that we wrote down here. Wow, I am not able to draw today. We're going to write this equation down here, which that's going to be 2x minus 6. And it says that that is going to equal 42. They find more bones? Did you take that? Dude, you took that bone off of my desk. No, sir. He went and got another, dude, he went and got another bone. Not right now, man. All right, back at it. Back at it, holy cow. All right, so this is gonna equal 42. So I'm going to write out my balance, and then I'm going to add my x's together, my like term. So x plus 2x is going to give me 3x. I bring down everything else, and that's going to be 42. So then I add 6 to each side to get rid of the 6 with my that's on the side with my variable. So I add 6 over here. So that's going to equal 48. 
and then I bring down my 3x. Divide each side by 3, crosses out over here, x equals, and then I've got 48 divided by 3, 16, let's find out. 48 divided by 3, yep, 16, equals 16. So we know that our smaller number is now 16. So to fill in for our larger number, we just need to write out our equation and make uh, 16 for x. So we got 2 times 16 minus 6. So 2 times 16 is 32. 32 minus 6 should give us 28. I'm going to double check because I need to make sure. 26. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, I'm great. I'm so good. Uh, so that's going to equal 26. So then we check our work. 16 plus 26 equals, that's 2, 12, and that will be 42. So 16 plus 26 will give me 42. All right. So the way I would write this out is that my smaller, smaller number equals 16. Larger number, my larger number equals 26. And if I were to type this in or write it on my paper, I would have 16 comma 26 as my final response. So that's how we find two numbers. If, uh, if the problem asks us for two numbers, uh, that is how we would find it. However, we are going to move on to the next part, which the next part is... Let me make this bigger. This one is asking about rectangles, so perimeters of rectangles. The length of a rectangle is 6 inches more than its width. If the perimeter of the rectangle is 24 inches, uh, let's find its dimensions. So I'm going to, instead of partitioning, I know I'm going to need three spots, but I'm going to write, so uh, the length of the rectangle is 6 inches more than its width. So I'm going to allow, so let x equal width what was that that's scribble let x equal width all right now i'll draw my line and we're gonna let length or let let's see we need six inches more so six inches more it's just going to be x plus six equals length And if I wanted to draw this out, so that way I could get a visual representation of what I'm saying, or what this question is asking me rather, I would draw a perfect rectangle as always, and I would label it. So X is my width. So this is my width, and this is my width. And then if X plus six is my length, then that means that this is my length over here, and this is my length over here. So I have x plus 6 and x plus 6 on one side and x and x on the other side. So to write out this problem, I'm going to have 1 and 2. So I'm going to have 2x. So I have x here and x here. I have 2x. And then I'm going to have x plus 6 and x plus 6. So that means I'm going to have plus two times x plus six equals and it says the perimeter is 24 inches so it equals 24 and the way that I got all of that going on is because I have two x's so that's why I got two x in the front then my length is x plus 2, and that's why I got 2 times 
x I'm sorry my length is x plus 6 and that's why I got two times x plus 6 because there's two of them so the first thing I need to do is I need to do my distributive property so 2 times x is going to give me 2x 2 times 6 is going to give me a positive 12 and I just bring everything else down even this 2x up front so now I do my balance 2x plus 2x is going to give me 4x and I bring everything else down combining my like terms first and then I subtract 12 on this side and subtract 12 on this side these two cross out that leaves me with 12 bring down my 4x and then I divide both sides by 4 this crosses out there that crosses out there 12 divided by 4 will give me 3 so that means that x equals 3 so that means that our length our length right there I'm sorry our width is going to be 3 so 3 here and 3 on the other side so to get my width now I just write out my problem and I put 3 in for my variable since x equals 3 so we've got 3 plus 6 and that's going to give me 9 so I've got 3 and 9 so I could say that my width my width equals 3 and my length my length equals 9 and if I draw this out here that means that that's 9 here that's 9 there that's 3 that's 3 I add them up 3 plus 3 is 6 9 plus 9 is 18 18 plus 6 will give me 24 so if I add my parameter together I will get or if I add my sides together I will get the perimeter which is 24 inches all right moving on to my next problem here let's pick out a new color let's do a gray the length of a rectangle is five inches more than four times its width. Okay, so now we're getting a little more complicated here, but that's okay because I know that I'm going to still let x equal my width. So still let x equal my width. And then I'm going to let, and then we got to find our uh, equation here. So it says the rectangle is 5 inches more than, so I know more than is going to come at the end, 4 times its width. So we're going to say let 4 times x, 4x, plus 5 equal length. So 4x plus 5 equals length. Now all I'm going to do again is I'm just going to write out an equation. So... I know that I have, you know, actually before I write out my equation, let me draw my diagram so that way it helps me see what we're talking about. So down here that's going to be 4x plus 5 and up top is 4x plus 5 because that is my length and my length and my width is going to be x and x. So now to write this out, again I'm doing 2x because there's 2x's here, 2 times x multiply an x by 2 you get 2 2 x 2 times x 2 x and then I've got my length as 4 x plus 5 so again I have to add 2 times 4 x plus 5 and that's going to equal and my equation says that that's going to equal 90 equals 90 all right so to solve this out, we're going to do the same thing. Draw my balance, do my distributive property. 2 times 4x is going to give me 8x. 2 times 5 is going to give me a positive 10. Bring down the rest of my equation. Bring down that 2x up front. Then I combine my like terms. 2x plus 8 will give me... 10x, 2x plus 8x will give me 10x, then I bring down everything else. 10x plus 10 equals 90. 
Now I need to get that variable all by itself. I need to isolate the variable, so I subtract 10 from both sides. That crosses out over on my left side and leaves me with an 80 on my right side, and I bring down my 10x. Now to get the variable all by itself, I have to divide both sides by 10. So that's going to mean that x equals x equals uh, 8. Seeing how that works on the screen. Looks like it works pretty well. All right, so yeah, x equals 8. All right. So now I know that x equals 8. So in order to find my next part, so that is my width. So to find the length, I need to put 8 in for where the x would be. So 4 times 8 plus 5. And to do that, I simply multiply... 4 times 8, that'll give me 32. 32 plus 5, 32 plus 5 is going to be 37. So x equals 8, so that means that my width, my width equals 8, and my length equals 37. That's not 37, that's 35. Equals 37. And the way that would look on my rectangle is that if I draw it out, this would be 8 over here, 8 over here, 37 here, 37 here. If I add that all together, 16, yep, if I add that all together, that equals 90. Oh, that is good. All right. So that is how we work out problems with re uh, yeah rectangles. I almost said triangles. Man, it's been a weird, weird recording. But that's how we work out problems with rectangles. Our next set of problems, and I'm only going to do a couple of these. Our next set of problems are going to involve consecutive numbers. So I know that if I'm looking for a consecutive number, consecutive numbers are like one, two, three, four, and so on. So consecutive numbers are just one, two, three, four. Now if I'm looking for like consecutive even numbers, that's gonna look like two, four, six, eight. And consecutive odd numbers, are going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so on and so forth. So sometimes you're going to be asked to find consecutive numbers. And I personally think that this is one of the easiest things. So, for example, the sum of two consecutive numbers is 1, 2, 3, 123. Find those numbers. So the first thing we need to do is we need to let x equal the first number. So I'm just going to let x equal the first number. And then for my second number, so I need two consecutive numbers. For, to get from 1 to 2, all I need to do is I need to add 1. So I'm going to let x plus 1 equal my second number. After I do that, I just write out my equation. So it's x plus x plus 1 equals 123. And now I just simply solve. x plus x gives me 2x plus 1. Bring down the 123. Now I subtract 1 from each side because I need to isolate that variable. That leaves me with 122. 2x equals 122. Now to get rid of that 2, I just divide. 2x times 2, the inverse operation is division. So now 122 divided by 2 will give me 61. So x equals 61. So that means that my first number is 61. We don't even, you don't even have to do the math to know what the second number is, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I have 61 plus 1 equals 62. So 61 plus 62 will equal 123. So now to write our 
um, definition or define what x equal actually is. So the first number, so first number equals 61, second number equals 62. So those are consecutive, one right after the other. And that's all we need to do to find these questions, find these answers to these questions. Now, if, uh, let's see, let's scroll down a little bit. Here we go. I'm going to do number 13. So I'm going to do number 13 here. So it says, I'm going to change that color. It's a little too, too pow for me. So two consecutive odd numbers is 128. So the first thing I need to do is let x equal first number. So let x equal the first, and then I'm going to let x, and then I'm just going to go up top and double check. So it says odd numbers. To get from 1 to 3, I need to add 2. So 1, 2, 3. Yep, I need to add 2. Just double check in there. So that means that my second number is going to be x plus 2. And that's going to equal my second number. So x equals my first number, x plus 2 equals my second number. So two consecutive odd numbers equals 128. So that's going to be x plus x plus 2 equals 128. And now we just solve like we normally would. So draw my balance. x plus x gives me 2x. And then I bring everything else down, plus 2 equals 128. See, I need to isolate this x, so I need to subtract 2 here. That's going to cross out, subtract 2 here. So that'll leave me with 126 equals. And then we got 2x. 2 times x, the inverse operation is division. So I cross those out, and I'm left with, you know what? Should be... 73 maybe? 122 divided by 2. 61. Wow, I was not even in the ballpark. Equals 61. Wait a second. Wait a second. I put in 122. 126 divided by 2 equals 63. Let me fix that. That's why sometimes we can't trust that calculator. That's going to be 63. All right, so that means that my first number is 63. So if I'm looking for my second number, that means that I have 63 plus 2, which would give me 65. So 63 plus 65, 12, 12, and 8, yep, that would be 128. So adding them together equals 128, so that is correct. So that means that the first number so the first number equals 63, and the second, second number equals 65. And to enter that in, I would not do 6 comma, I would do 63 comma 65. Wow, super, super good. All right, and that's how we're going to handle these problems. The last problem I'm going to do for you is this one here, and I'll just pick the even one since we did an odd one on the last one. It says the, let me put it there, yep, the sum of three consecutive even numbers is 138. So to find this, I'm going to say let x equal first number. And I'm going to say we know that the next number is going to be x plus 2 equals second. And then let x plus, well, let's, let's double check. 1, 3, 5. So if we get to 1 to 3, it's plus 2. To get the 3 to 5, it's plus 2. So that means it's going to be plus 4 equals third number. So 
the reason that we're doing plus 4 is to get from our original number, which is x, to 5. We need to add, I'm sorry, which is x, which we would say is the lowest odd number, to 5, which is increasing the value by 4. So that's why we have x plus 4. All right. Let's go ahead and solve this. We're going to have x plus x plus 2 plus plus, let's try it again, plus x plus 4 equals 138. I felt like I was saying plus really weird. And to solve this, we are just going to combine our like terms. So I have x plus x. And then I have another positive x over here. So that means that I'm going to have 3x. And then I've got 2 plus a positive 4, which is going to be a positive 6, equals 138. So now, to get rid of this uh, 6, we just subtract. Because we are isolating that variable. Subtract 6, subtract 6, minus 6 here. So that is 132. And then that will give us 3x equals 132 to get rid of that whole number there, that constant. We need to divide by 3. So that's going to be 132 divided by 3 would give me 44. These cross out. That bring my x down. So that means that our first number, our first number, and I'm going to draw down here. So we still have our workspace. Our first number, which is x, is going to be 44. So now to get our second number, so to get to our second number, we're going to do 44 plus 2. That will give us 46. And to get to our third number, it's 44 plus 4, which will give us 48. So our answer will be 44, 46, and 48. Let me do the math real quick to see if that adds up. So 44 plus 46 plus 48, that equals 138. So that would be our answer here. So let's just go ahead and define that. So we're going to say our first number equals 44. Second equals 46. And third equals 48. And that's, that's all there is to it. I know it seems like it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but as long as you continue to show your work, uh, you will always get these correct. You just need to make sure that you do show your work and that you do work out the problems. And you can't always trust your calculator. You see I made a mistake there entering in um, 122 instead of 126. So just, uh, just make sure you're double checking everything. If you have any questions or concerns, I hope this video helps. If not, leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can, which will usually be pretty soon. And uh, if you have any suggestions for other videos, please let me know and I will make them and hopefully help you guys out. All right, see you all on the flippity flop.